How is it going, guys? We are back here on YouTube and on Twitch, by the way, as well, for another study session. Let me get my mic straight, by the way. So yesterday, we started off with learning more about single race pots out of position as the preflop aggressor. And today I want to continue that topic because there is a lot more to cover and a lot more to learn for myself and maybe also for you if you're interested in it. So we're going to continue with the hands that I played. Uh, I still have a lot of hands in the list, basically. And I hope today to learn a little bit more about check raising. That would be great because yesterday it was primarily about C betting or not. And talking about bigger concepts, ideas on how to play in general in those spots, how to think about board textures, what are the reasons for betting, what are the reasons for checking. But in single race pots, what often happens is that we check and we face a bet from the other player and then we have a decision to make. And one of the things that I see very often in, for example, databases from my students is that their check raise frequency is very low. And it's, a, it's often a big leak by a lot of players really. And today, Let's try to get better at that spot. So I hope you're with me, guys. If you do so, and if you like this, then make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, let's get into it. I'm also live on Twitch, by the way. But let's get going. Actually, I want to do one thing real quickly. Give me like 30 seconds, guys. Just making sure a couple of things are correct. Mm. Okay, that's good. And if you are here, guys, make sure to come and say hi in the chat. More fun to work on PLO strategy together than just by yourself, in my opinion. Okay, okay. I think we're good. Yeah, guys. Let's get into it. By the way, the PLO Mastermind is hiring new coaches. In case you are interested in that. Then check out plomastermind.com forward slash apply. There's also a link in the description below. And we are basically looking for additional coaches coaches to our team. We have Suapex, we have myself, Fernando and Ryan, four coaches at the moment. But if you want to also be a coach, if you have the aspiration to teach others, if you think you have something to share with others, a new approach, a unique skill, then um, feel free to reach out. These are some additional notes on the application, you can click on this button, send in a video of yourself teaching PLO, and um, from there, the rest is basically self explanatory. Okay, okay. I got myself a nice cup of tea. 
Um, hello, hello in the chat. I don't know what your name is. It's really hard. Probably Russian. <laughs> Probably Russian, huh? Okay, so... Let's talk about it, guys. Let's talk about it. So, I filtered down in my database for single race pots out of position. And we're going to look at hands where I played versus one opponent. And... We'll use my database, but also go through... Peel a trainer if we need it to learn more about... The board textures about GTO solutions, about bigger concepts, IDs. Lost Paradise, how is it going? Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate the kind words, for sure. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, that is basically the plan. And I would say we're just going to get into it. And from there, let's find some cool boards, do some training. Etc. If you have any questions, also guys, use the comment section, either on Discord, or either on Twitch or on YouTube, and um, yeah, ask away. Okay, let's get into it, guys. First hand, this one is played at one two. Uh, we open raise Queen Jack Jack Deuce double suited, pretty standard. Petros, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate you tuning in. And the first board is King Five Deuce Rainbow, guys. King Five Deuce Rainbow. And on this board, we are going to do. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second. How do I do this? Hmm. Yeah, let's get into it. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Um... King 5 2's Rainbow. So, what would you guys think about this board texture? Because you have to think again from the bigger picture first before looking into our exact hand. It's very easy to say, well, we have an under pair to the king, let's check. Or we have a pair of deuces, blocking deuces, so let's bet. That's not how you want to think about these situations. You always want to start with the bigger picture. How do ranges interact to a board? Think about what that does for each player who's going to do more batting, who will have more strong mate hands on the board. And then there are additional reasons, right? Position, for example, SPR, um, hand strength, of course. But when you think about a board that is like King 5 Deuce Rainbow, we have to realize that on this board, our open raising range is not going to have a lot of strong mate hands. And therefore, the starting point is we're going to do a good amount of checking. We're going to do a lot of checking or a decent amount of checking because we're not going to have a lot of two pairs sets on this board. And on top of that, we also don't have a very large range advantage that we can allow ourselves to suddenly do still a lot of batting because we are crushing basically range versus range. But that is not the case on a board text like this. Our opponent on the button, the cold calls preflop, can easily call with, can easily cold call preflop with almost all kings in his range, basically, if he doesn't three bet them. He can also have fives, he can have deuces, and our open raising range, yes, we will also have a good amount of kings. But we are not holding an advantage in that section, really. So let's take a look into how this is played out in a pre-ran GTO solution, basically. So I'm going to open up Peeler Trainer just for a second, guys. We're not going to spend too much time in this, really. And see if there is a board where that comes relatively close to the ones that we're looking at. So King 5 Deuce. The first thing you have to realize is that 
We're looking for a board that is similar in structure, right? Because we don't have all the boards in a software like this. This is only a selection of flops that are available. So if you look into that, we can say that, for example, King 3 Deuce is a board we can use. Or King 6 Deuce. Or King 6 3. King 6 3 is also very similar, although there is no wheel straight draw, basically. So I would start off with King 3 Deuce just to get an ID on how a board texture like this plays. And I want to ask you guys before I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal the answer. Like think about it for yourself and please write it down in the chat as well. Like how often would you see that on King 3 Deuce cutoff versus button? Take your time to think about it and write it down in the chat guys. Is it like I don't know 10% are you betting 20%, 50%? Like, what is it, do you think? This is, again, based on two ranges in play that are well-constructed, right? Like, a cutoff open raising range, 30% of hands, button flatting range, between 10 and 15%. So, a, uh, so two... Yeah, two well-defined preflop ranges, basically. And we can see we got On My Own saying less than 5%. That's not a lot. We got Fabian Rigo in the chat. Welcome, man. 0%. 0%. Nice. And then 1%. Okay. So it seems that you guys think that the frequency of betting is pretty low. And I would agree with this. Like king high boards in general, single race pots out of position. There are only a few exceptions where there's really some betting. But let's take a look. Let's take a look what we think or what we can learn from it. We can see 6%. So 6% guys. And of course when a frequency becomes like this low basically. So very close to zero. You can get away or you can come up with arguments for simplifying your entire strategy. By just checking all of your hands basically. And that makes your life much easier when you sit down in a situation like this because you don't have to worry about let's say you have king king on this board do i want to bet my king king or do i want to check it if you know that on king high boards in general you're going to do overall less than 10 percent c betting let's simplify it for a second then maybe you can get away with checking your entire range including all your strong made hands there are a couple of benefits in doing that and one of those is Something that I also want to address today more is we want to find ways to increase our check raise frequency, right? Or at least get that up to a number that we're aiming for. I see a lot of people check raising out of position roughly 10% or less. And I mean, I got to be honest, like I also struggle with that. It's, it's difficult to find enough check raises for sure. So one of the ways to get that number up if that's something you're struggling with is to check more of your very good hands and make sure that you have more strong hands in that range so you can easily check raise them and increase that way your check raise frequency basically one of the reasons why we want to check raise with a frequency that is often aimed for like anywhere from 10 to 15 percent i would say definitely double digits in almost any situation really we're aiming for a check raise frequency over 10%, is that we want to challenge our opponent, basically. If our opponent in position who takes a step knows that the out-of-position player is never or almost never going to check raise, he has an extremely profitable step with a ton of hands in his range. And that's simply because he knows that he will not get check raise or not get check raise that often. And that makes his life so much easier and so much more profitable. And because we want to challenge that, basically, we want to make sure that as the out of position player, we're going to have enough check raises in our range. Now, there are more reasons for check raising, for sure. This is, this is one of them. And we'll get more into it later on, I would say. But less than 6 or 6%, 6 guys, 6% 6 on this board. Now let's go back to the hand in question, queen, jack, jack, deuce. When we know that it's 6%, I 
I would simplify it and just check my entire range on king on this board, for example. I would do that on a lot of boards, by the way. I spoke about it yesterday in my live stream. Reasons for why I think that is a good idea. But this is just an easy check, like not much to say about. And my opponent checks back. Okay. Turn is the king. Turn is the king, guys. And at this point, we can ask ourselves, like, does it make sense to, to start betting? Is there some value in betting in the first place? And I would say that in position, we'll probably bet the majority of his king X on the flop. So the likelihood of him having king X or better at this point is pretty minimal. Now, the fact that we have jacks and we also block a queen helps us a little bit in the sense that it's less likely that if we bet, we get called by, for example, queens if we have jack-jack. It's also unlikely our opponent will have aces because he will 3-bet the majority of aces preflop. So I think on the turn, there is a decent argument to, to be made to go for a delay bet. We also block a deuce and we can get some value or deny some equity versus like gutters or hearts, for example. We got D Boris in the chat. D Boris, how's it going? I heard you're coming to Holland. I heard you're coming to Holland. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't mind the bet, to be honest. I decided to check. My opponent checks back. Not sure if I like my play too much. Um, River Jack. I mean, on the river, the flush comes in. So the question is, do we want to bet ourselves, try to get value from a flush? Or do you want to check in the hope our opponent value bets a flush that we can get check raised, that we check raise against, or give him room to bluff himself? And I would say I'm a little bit more of a fan of betting, I think. First of all, I, I would say that if my opponent would have, for example, turned the nut flush draw, he probably takes a stab on the turn quite frequently. So he doesn't have a nut flush, I think, that often, which he's going to stab, which will take away some of his stabs. He also checked twice, so I'm not sure how likely it is that he's going to bluff on the river, really. Um, I would go for a bet. I like my bet. Ooh, he did have a nut flush. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, guys. There goes my read. There goes my read. There goes my read. Okay. Um, let's think about it from his perspective. Preflop, this is a hand you want to fold. Um, it's too wide to call here, also given his stack size. He is, uh, he's very shallow, so you almost not want to have a calling range, really. Uh, on the flop when versus Jack, I think he, he has a decent hand to bet, really. He has a gutter, he has a pair blocker, he has backdoor hearts. Um... He unblocks queens, jacks, tens, hands that can fold. So I think on the flop, I would like a, a bet by him uh, a little bit more. A turn as played, I would, I mean, turn could also be a bet with the flush draw. I mean, he has a five. Not sure how much showdown value that really means. Could be a bet. River call, pretty standard, I would say. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Boris, do we check call flop without two backdoor flush draw? Uh, well. Do we check call? I mean... Eh. Well, let's see what... I would... I would probably check fold. I would probably check fold this one. Yeah, I, I check fold this. But maybe I'm too tight. Maybe I'm too tight there. Let's see. Queen, jack, jack, deuce. Check call. Yeah, so it is a check call. Uh, check call. Um, one back to flush draw. EV of like 0 0.8, 0 0.7. So yeah, apparently it's a check call. Mike, how is it going? Thank you for tuning in. Leafus as well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this one was played at PLO 200. Yes. Okay, next up. Ace-Jack-8-8. We open-raise, button calls. 
this is a great board for us or a pretty good board for out of position we are the ones with all the aces in our range our opponent calls pre-flop he would three bet the majority of aces so we have a top set advantage uh we will also have a good amount of like ace x hands with sometimes a jack sometimes a flush draw sometimes a two overcards to the jack like straight draws in addition so we do pretty well and our opponent will do okay we definitely have an advantage here but our opponent don't forget that he can easily have like not flush draws uh jacks um, ace x hands also sometimes so i think on this board we probably can bet around 40 percent of the time or so i would say around 40 percent given that it's a good board again think about the concepts of out of position that we are generally going to do a lot of checking and a side boards in a normal setting is really only one of the exceptions where we have a batting range or where we should at least in theory have a batting range um this hand i think we have a i mean we can probably just bet it we unlock spades uh, we have top two pair, backdoor flush draws. I would just bet this one, which I do. I like it. Uh, what does my opponent, does he raise? He raises, that's sick. So let's think about it. So he raises. Hmm. Well, we don't want to get it in. We don't want to get it in, first of all. That doesn't make too much sense. Question is, do we want to... I mean... Seems like a pretty standard call. He pot size raises, right? Yeah, he pot size raises. Not something that you see a lot. Like, we could call and then... Probably the standard call. See a turn card. Go from there. Our opponent shouldn't have too many raises on this board, really. Because our range is in a significant advantage. Our opponent will have a few aces in position that he flats. Not too many. You can easily have like ace x with spades for example that he raises. I think calling is pretty standard. Oh yeah again. Why do I always forget this? The raise is on the bottom. On the bottom here. 49. Uh, yeah I think calling is what we should do. I fold. Wow. That's sick. I fold. Maybe I had a read on my opponent? Possible. Maybe. I think this is too tight. I think this is too tight. Let's take a look into this. So, what are we looking at? Middle position versus button. Huh? Middle position versus button. Uh, I'll just fold exploitatively, yeah? Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Maybe it's not that bad to fold. Ace check three. Let's go with this board. Folding versus most real opponents seems good. Okay. Well, I like your guys' feedback. <laughs> I like that to hear. Gives me a little bit more confidence in... I mean... Whatever. Let's see. I would say 40% betting here. It is 44. 44 in theory bets. Um, we have a hand like Ace-Jack-8-8 eight, eight with the backdoor flush draw. Uh, we didn't have a spade. So our hand is pretty much a mix. We can bet. We can check. Both seem to be fine. What I'm interested in is if we check, are we going to check race or are we going to check call? Because I think it's going to be a check call because we don't have that much backup. But let's figure it out. Like sort of bare top two pair. Again, pretty mixed. Like you can see that there is definitely a decent amount of mixing overall. A little bit more check raising, actually. A little bit more check raising. Like, I wonder what happens if this happens. Are we going to fold a jack? Yeah, we are. So we are check raising in a way. 
hoping to make our opponent fold. If he comes over the top sort of, then we do have to fold. And that's not something that you see happen a lot, right? Like check raising top two pair and then folding versus shove. I think that is... Yeah. It's a cool line, but not something that I have in my game, I would say. Okay. So I decided to fold... Uh, well, we still didn't look... I mean, this is definitely never a fault here, right? Um, Ace-Jack will never fold in this scenario. No. Yeah, so here's just a call. Meh. Mm. Meh. Absolutely agree with Boris. Okay. Petros says it looks like a nut rundown or Ace-Jack-Jack. Jack. Yeah, I guess Ace-Jack-Jack, we're pretty dead. Against ace x with high spades. We also do, do, don't do that great, of course. So maybe folding is not that bad. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, I mean, SPR is 2. It's really whatever, I think. Uh, we have a nut flush draw gutter back to hearts. I mean... Pot? I think we can just pot it. I think I like the pot. Next one. Ace, king, queen, queen. Um, Jack, six, deuce again. Board. We definitely... We will have some bets that we could find. But overall, not a board texture where our range has a ton of very strong hands. We're going to do a lot of checking. I would say... Batting frequency, 15%, maybe 10%. Something like that, probably. Uh, because the six and the deuce, they don't really interact also with the imposition player. I think our frequency goes up a little bit to 15%, maybe. Now, when you think about our hand, does it make sense to come in for a bet? We have hearts, we have backup. The problem really, I mean, we unblock Jack X, which could be helpful. Again, thinking about my principles from yesterday, seabed frequency is less than 15% or so. I would simplify it to check, so I would like a check a little bit more, to be honest. Obviously, I bet. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Sizing is okay. I think we get cold. Uh, let's take a look at the flop just for a second, by the way, guys, to see if this could also be a check race, maybe. Because that's what we want to learn more about today. Unpaired. Two toned, jack, six, deuce. We do have jack, six, deuce. Okay, the jack is unsuited here, so there's a little bit the difference, but. Not a huge difference. Um, how often do you guys think that we're betting on this board? Or that we should bet? Is it as low as I think? Or do you think we're betting like more? Like 20, 30, 40%? What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Um, over pair plus flush is most part of range in the middle to not betting and check calling. Yeah, although this is the nut flush draw, right? Pretty strong. Blocking always blocker bluffs. C betting seems fine, even if it's super low bet frequency. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I would say 15% or less. It's 16.6. .6, okay. 16.6% were betting. Um, and again, I think that we, s yeah, whatever, whatever, 16.6%. Over pair plus nut flush draw, if we look into that strength hand class, you can see that an over pair with a nut flush draw is batting 31%. So there is definitely some batting with this hand, with, within this hand class. Um, 
if we filter for aces 32 kings 21 queens 33 What if we have like those three diamonds, which is what we had basically. Three diamonds, we're going to do more checking. We're going to do more checking. Ace, king, queen, queen. I mean, whatever. Right? You see that it's still somewhat mixed. Now the question is, what are we doing if we check and face a bet? Are we check raising or are we check calling? Uh, I think it's a check call. I think it's a check call. I think we rather check raise with two diamonds. We rather check raise with a jack blocker. We rather check raise with aces. So I would probably check call it. And it's a check call. Okay. We are check calling. We're check raising 12.9%. So if you look into these hand classes, like what hands are we checking to check raise? Uh, top set check raising a lot. Two pair. Top two pair check raising quite a bit. One pair. Over pair top pair. Um, first lose this guy. I'm betting less due to more in the overall range. Mm-hmm. I think what I want to do is just train a few hands just to get a little bit of an idea of so train selection just a few hands guys we're not going to spend too much time on it but today I want to spend some time on check raising so if we want to do that then we have to do some training right so keep in mind that's important keep in mind that on this board we see about roughly 16% if you want you could check everything and all these hands that we now see, they are a check, right? These hands are all checked. So let's take a look into how to play. Bear top two pair, no backup. I think easy... I would say easy call, but it's a mistake. That's sick. So the first hand mistake right away. Ace, ace, jack, six. I decided to call. It's a mistake. So if we look into top two pair without backup, we can see the top two pair without backup is check raising six percent only six percent only so not a lot joe rooney how's it going welcome from liverpool nice wendell back in the mix thank you for tuning in matt how's it going thank you guys so if we look into this pair top two pairs so this is in a way similar as what we just saw with ace on ace jack right where we check raised bear or top two pair basically you can see that on this board there's also a little bit of check raising with jack six but it's pretty low frequency right like if you see six percent check raise and 94 percent check call with this hand class which is jack six no backup i think you can just simplify to check call or you probably would simplify to check call in reality but that also tells me something that if we go back to the training, I made the mistake with this hand, but it doesn't matter too much because 94% of the time I would have been correct. So I think this is fine, really. Nice function. <laughs> yeah. It's a good way to quickly jump into the bucket, basically. That's why we added it. Uh, can you check if ace, king, queen, queen, diamond, diamond check raises? I mean, we can. Uh, give me a second. So let's do that here. So ace, queen, queen with a flush draw. No. No, it's also a check call. Let's uh, keep going. Uh, this would be a, I think, check raise. 5533, three, I would check call this one. 
10887. Like, this feels pretty thin. Like, I'm not sure if this is that great to check call, really. We have a low flush draw. Pretty poor playability down the road. It's probably a check call, but it will be pretty low EV. 0.9, so not a lot. King King H6. King King H6, guys. We have the King of Diamonds. Like, this could be one of our check risk bluffs. The problem is that we don't have much equity, right? We don't have much equity. Like this is definitely one of those hand classes, pair blocker with flush draw, with high flush draw blocker, where we could think about adding it into our check raising range. The problem is that this hand, I mean, I don't think we're gonna check fold first of all. Can we play well enough to check call? I think I go for a call. <sighs> yeah. Uh, ace jack four deuce. This seems like a very easy check call. Ace six three. Call. By the way, guys, you can see the EV on the right side, right, of each of these action columns, and the EV basically tells you something of how profitable is it to call or to raise. The closer this number is to zero, the more marginal the play becomes. The higher the number come becomes, the better or the more value there is in taking that line, basically. For example, I mean, yeah, you can see it for yourself, basically. Uh, check fold. Ace queen eight six. Check fold. King king seven five. Check call. Ace is ten six. I think aces with a pair blocker are just primarily going to check call unless we have such a strong blocker that we want to turn it into a bluff. This is probably a call. Ace queen jack ten. Call raise. Okay. So this is a race. We look at top pair with a flush draw blocker. If we take a quick look into this category. Let's take a look. So a top pair and a flush draw blocker. What happens? If we have the Ace of Diamonds, I mean, this is this is a pretty helpful takeaway, guys. Because if you have a Jack with a nut, with an Ace of Diamonds only, you can see that we're always going to check raise blood. We're always check raising basically all these combinations. Pretty simple. Five APM. How's it going? Thank you for tuning in. Petros asks, when we have ace, ace, jack, six without a flush draw, is it possible what our opponent can have less nut flush draws? Hmm. When we have ace, ace, jack, six. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure. Uh, cool. Fold. Fold. We're gonna do a few hands, guys, then we move on. Fold. 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 Uh, bottom set, uh, call. If you look into the hand class of bottom set, I will expect a lot of calls. Yeah, bottom set. So, deuce deuce is almost never going to check race. So the check raises that we want to have, they don't necessarily always come from sets. I mean, jack, jack, top set, of course, is a high frequency check raise. But middle set, much less, bottom set, almost never. Uh, okay, this one. Call. Hmm, hold. Top set, check race. Mm, I think we just want to call. This could be one of those check races again. I would just check call it. 
which is fine. Okay, uh, let's stop this and go back to the hands in question. So we decided to check all, which is the correct play. Turn is oh no, we bet, right? We bet. <laughs> we see bet, get called. We should have check called. Was that correct actually? Just to remind myself. So ace. Ace king and queen with diamonds. And we're checking. Okay. Okay, this should have been a check call. Uh turn, easy check. Not a great card for our hand, and also not a great card for our range. So two arguments for doing a lot of checking. Check, check. River three. I mean, my opponent calls the flop saying he either has a draw or he has a marginal mate hand. He doesn't raise, so he doesn't have like jacks or sixes or deuces or jack six almost ever. He calls, so we go to the turn. On the turn, there are two flush draws out there. We block the nut flush, the second nut flush, the third nut flush. I think on the river, we just want to bet. Like, we unlock all the pairs on the board. We un we block, like, some of his higher flushes that he might go for value with himself. So I would just bet it. And we get a fold. Not sure about the sizing. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's fine. Okay, next up. Uh, really hard to see the flush situation without four color deck when used to it. Yeah. Do we have that here? I mean, we can change the deck if you, if that's default, I guess. The same. We can do this. We can use this. Let's see if this better. Let's see if this is better. I would play one third, yeah. Maybe that makes sense. You want to get called by a straight, by somehow a two pair hand. Okay, next up. Ooh, look at this, look at this guy. We have the two, the four color deck, and we flop top pair and a nut flush, nut flush blocker. Either bet or check raise seems fine here. Thinking about the structure of the board, we will probably do a lot of checking. So I wouldn't mind going for a check. Probably a check raise. I think that's fine. But a bet could also be okay. We get a raise. Interesting. We get a raise, huh? I mean, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see what I did. I fold. Second time that I fold versus a race. Second time that I fold versus a race. Fold versus a fish, float versus a regular, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, if people underbluff a little bit, it becomes less appealing to call. Let's take a look. A uh, monotone. Uh, we got a board like queen seven three, pretty similar. I would assume that we don't do that much betting here. Sixteen percent again. Like the frequencies are pretty often around that fifteen percent mark. So far, that's what we see, right? Like a lot of fifteen percent betting frequencies. Ace is queen jack. With the ace of spades, with the uh, nut flesh poker, does this work? Nut flesh flesh. Why doesn't this work? What do I need? Uh, 
and blockers. Flash blockers. Blocker F. Alright, there we go. Yeah, my hand is pretty much a check. If we bet and get raised. This is Queen Jack. Yeah, this is... <laughs> it's also funny, right? Like, we are supposed to click it back, basically. Or at least, like, come over the top with our ace... Ace of spades. 44% of the time. Yeah, a lot of back raising. Especially if you have a queen blocker, you should raise a lot. My hand. Yeah, maybe against the regular raising, clicking back is to play. Against the recreational player, just fold. Ace queen queen se ace queen seven seven. Um, pure check on this board. Our opponent will have a lot of top set, middle set connection to the board. So um, being out of position on a texture like this, we can just simplify it to check everything. But I bet I don't like this bet. Unless he has like a very wide range, like sixty percent, <laughs> then it's fine. Otherwise, it's not. We get cold. Turn is the 10. Uh, probably check, like, too little equity. Check, check with the straight now. And we split, okay. So what I want to do for a second is... What I want to do for a second is we do duplicate this. Um, I think some of these hands have been played when I was playing some short stack as well. So therefore there are 100 big blind and, and shorter stack pots in there as well. Uh, so what I want to do for a second is go to small blind versus big blind. Uh, look at a board like king queen four. Because on a board like this, when ranges become like very wide, out of position will probably bet way more often. Like 57%. Look at this. Like small blind versus big blind, 57%. And uh, where are we here? And here it is like 0% probably, 5%. So you see that the board texture is not the reason that we check, right? Like that's important to realize. Therefore, I want to show that like the fact that we're out of position on king, queen, four is not the reason that we check our entire range. Because in this situation, we're also out of position on the same board. And the SPR is also really high. So the reason for checking is because on this board, our range does significantly less well versus our opponent's range than small blind versus big blind. The big blind's range is so wide that he has a lot of trash and our range suddenly significantly increases in value in comparison to his range. But in a scenario like this, where the button has like a 10% calling range preflop instead of a 50% calling range, his preflop range is so strong that on this board he does really well. And therefore, we cannot do that much betting. Our range is not that different. We open raise 30% on the cutoff maybe. And here we open raise 35%. So it's not the board texture. That's why I want to show this. It's not the board texture why we check so often. It's the ranges that are in play. Um, not saying that this is a bet because my bet was, I mean, let's see for a second. Ace, queen, seven, seven, still, still mainly a check really, even against wide ranges. 
So I don't like my bet in hindsight. Uh, okay, next up. Uh, King Queen 7 5. King Queen 10 7. Could go both ways. I think batting is okay. I think we could also check. We block kings and queens have no showdown value, so that is a reason for batting, I would say. My opponent raises, and I would just fold, which I think is fine. Uh, queen 7 3, rainbow. Mm. on this board I would check a lot again same principles but in this when I played these hands apparently I was thinking that I wanted to do a little bit more batting that's clear my opponent raises we have a very easy call or fault queen 7-3 we can look into it for a second Queen 7 3. We actually have the exact board. 10% or less, I would think that we're batting. 9%. Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7. It's not even a hand that's sometimes batting, it's just a pure check. It's Queen 9 4. Uh, this is a board where we can definitely do a decent amount of batting. We have top set the most often we have sometimes jack 10 we can have some two pairs some flush draws our opponent will also connect okay to this board but we will be in the advantage our hand is pretty much a medium strong hand i would say when we think about the principles of batting versus checking like the purpose of batting is to get value to get cold from worse generally speaking if we bet with this hand, like, sometimes we will get calls by worse, but not that often. And at the same time, the hands that we are ahead of, they still have significant equity. We also don't really benefit from building a pot by betting, getting called, and then on the turn, we almost always have to check, basically, because what turn are we happily barreling off again on? An ace is pretty much the only card, maybe a queen. So, therefore... Since we also know that we will check a significant part of our range, we're going to check the medium strong hands. Those hands benefit the least from building a pot. So I would just check this. We see a check, check. Uh, turn king. I would check again now. Check, check. River, deuce. I mean, our opponent basically says he doesn't have jack 10. He doesn't have king X or better. So ace-queen is pretty much the best hand. Do we want to let him bluff? I don't know. Could we get a cold by like ace-jack or so? Ace-queen? You could check sometimes king X back on the turn. I think it's pretty close. I think it's pretty close. I probably bet small. Yeah. I think like one third or 25% pot on the river. Sort of a block bet. Would have liked that more. Thank you very much. Appreciate the kind words, guys. Okay, okay. So, keep going. I'm gonna sit down, by the way. By the way, guys, if you are watching this on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you like this content, I will post regular videos on this channel about PLO strategy. 
So that would be highly appreciated also. Yeah, if you think anyone else likes these type of videos, then feel free to share that, of course. And um, yeah, any questions, let that know. Let me know in the comments, of course. But um, thank you all for being here. Okay, open race, king, queen, 10, 4, double. Pretty standard on this board. We're going to do a good amount of checking again. Not a board where we're going to have a lot of strong mate hands. The thing is on this board, the imposition player also won't have that many very strong mate hands. So I think we can definitely get away with batting some hands. Our hand though has no equity, no blockers. Um, I would just check and check fold, which is what we do. Ace nine nine eight. Um, not a great board for us in terms of strong mate hands. Um, it's quite dynamic also, so the nuts is going to change very often from flop to turn to river. We have a hand that is very very marginal. We have a gutter and a pair of nines. This is not a hand that benefits from betting at all. So uh, let's just check. And against the bat, we just check fold. Uh, 5 APM asks, um, are you reviewing all the hands you get involved in? I filtered basically in my database for single race pots out of position as the preflop aggressor versus one opponent and that's it no additional filters and what kind of situation do you bet like 70 percent well in these situations in out of position pots you don't necessarily bet very often with a high frequency in the first place so 70 percent is a number that is extremely high and it's almost not being reached on any board but the thing is that it really depends on the board texture. Like, you really need a board texture that is extremely good for your preflop range in order for you to reach a high frequency to bet with. And on most of those board textures, that's just not the case. Even ace high boards are good, but not always great. So on those boards, you often see frequencies like 40%, 35%, 45%. But I think what matters really is, just to, ask your, to answer your question, when do we bet 70%? The answer is if your opponent has a very, very weak and wide preflop range, and the board in addition is really good for you, then you can reach high betting frequencies. For example, small blind versus big blind on an ace high board, you probably do a lot of betting there. I mean, we can check it out. Unpaired rainbow. Let's say the board is ace jack seven. Ace jack seven. You can see the frequency is 86.9%. 86.9%. But if we look into another scenario, again, just for comp, just for to make the story a little bit more complete so you guys understand it. Um, let me reload this for a second. So cutoff versus button. And let's say the board is also ace jack seven. Again, keep in mind, small blind versus big blind, the frequency is 87%. But that is not what we're gonna see here. This is more like 40% probably. 46 so you can see that the preflop range is in play. Again, guys, the preflop range is in play play a massive role in how often you want to bet. It's not the board texture necessarily that decides whether you want to bet or check. Um, so yeah, 70% frequency is pretty rare in general. Um, where were we? We're here, right? So we check, face the bet, and we just fold. Uh, next up, ace, king, jack, 10. Uh, top pair, 
got our backdoor flesh draw. Starting off with the ranges in play. Who will have the advantage here? Who's going to do a lot of betting? Who has more made hands? I would say out of position is in an overpair advantage, but not necessarily in a advantage in terms of like the best made hands or the best draws. In positions, calling range will can easily have like a lot of jack x or 9x with straight draws, for example. We will have more over pairs with pair blockers, maybe. Um, so given that, and given that the nuts again will change a lot from flop to turn to river, you know that the out of position player won't, doesn't want to bet that often really. Because a strong hand on the flop simply isn't a strong hand on the river necessarily. And whenever that is the case, the out of position player has to be extremely selective with his betting frequency because he has to bet first on all those streets. So I would say this is an easy check call. Uh, pretty easy check call. Turns a three. Uh, first of all, we check. And we really hope that he checks back. Because if he pots, for example, we probably have to fold. Checks back. River is an eight. Um, There are... A lot of, like, first of all, our hand has not that much showdown value at this point, right? Like, yeah, ace jack, when you think about it, our opponent is going to beat us with, like, any two pair, which he has a lot on this run out. But also even, like, queens or kings, they also beat us. So, we're pretty low in our range. So, from that angle, we could think about, do we want to bluff? Now the reason, I don't know. Like there are three straights on the board, first of all. We block the nut straight and the second nut straight. So I think if we want to turn our hand into a bluff, we want to bet large to force out the, the lowest straight or two pairs or maybe some low sets. Like those are the hands that we are targeting to fold out. So we want to bet large if we bet, I think. Now, our hand has a 10 blocker and a jack blocker. So we block two straights and we block like some two pairs with jack x. So I think we have a decent candidate to bluff. So I think I like bluffing. The reason for not bluffing could be that we also block the king. And the king, we, we want our opponent to have kings or queens, right? Like that is the biggest part of our opponent's range that we want him to fold, I think. A hand like... I don't know, a hand like king, king, queen, jack, for example. If he has that. Or king, king, queen, nine. Like those type of hands. If he has those, we want him to fold. So blocking the king doesn't really help too much. I still think if we check, we're just going to lose always. I don't know. I like a bet more. Okay. Luckily, I do bet. And we take it down. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm happy with the bet. I think I'm happy with the bet. Yeah. yeah, I think this is... Yeah, I like it. Um, five, if you, how do you like this bet sizing? How do you like his bet sizing? I was actually asking about pot size bet versus 70% like he did now. Why not one fifth here? Uh, sorry, man. It's I don't know which... Which hand it was. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I can't find... I don't know what hand it was anymore, so I can't answer that. Would you have called a pot bet here too? Sorry, maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. Would you have called a pot bet here too? You mean here? Or do you mean this hand, actually? Like check. I would also call a pot bet size here, yeah. I think this is a pretty interesting board, by the way, to do some check race training on. Uh, cutoff versus button. And the reason is because I want to train check raises. 
Now let's see if we have this board or a similar board. This is a Jack 9-5. We have Jack 9-6. Let's go Jack 9-6. Yeah, I like his bet sizing through 70%. I think that's fine. Half pot would also be fine. Half pot is good, yeah. I personally would probably go with half pot, but I think maybe a little bit larger is better, like 60%, 66. A little bit more fold equity that way. Jack 9-6, betting 40%. Um, you can definitely simplify it again to check everything. But I'm going to go for a check race training now. Okay, uh, check raise 12%, guys. Let me actually make it like this. 12%, check full 33. Now, that is another thing, right, about this line. And that is that we're talking about c-betting versus checking in the first place. Then we talk about check raising. But there's also check folding and check calling, right? Like, check folding, what, at least based on my experience, right, based on, for example, experience with coaching students, is very often people check fold 50%, for example. 50% is a frequency that you see quite a bit. Now, in reality, we, in theory at least, we should check fold roughly thir between 30 and 40% on most board textures. So that means that the out of position players heavily over check folding. And that gives the in-position player a lot of incentive to exploitatively bet way more because he can expect a lot of faults. And if you know your opponent will check fold 50% instead of 33% and he check raises 7% instead of 12%, then you can just bet everything, I think, in position. That, that you do. I mean, why would you ever check? Like all your bluffs you can bet because they are instantly profitable. You can also bet the majority of your medium strong hands because you will not get check raised almost ever. So you can just put so much pressure on them that you really want to avoid that scenario as the out of position player by making sure that you check raise enough and that you also don't check fold too often really. Or yeah. Uh, anyway, let's uh, get into some training guys. We're going to look at the most important pockets which are these three. Um, show this and then train filter. Yeah, half pot is fine. Half pot is definitely fine. I agree. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Boris. I agree. I definitely agree. People use larger sizing, so we fold more. More merch, fold also more. Totally agree. Uh, okay, guys, give me a second. Ace, Jack, Jack, eight. And also think for yourself, right, in these hands, what would you do? Would you check raise? Would you check call? Because if you, that's an important, that's a helpful principle about learning and studying is try to come up with the answer yourself before you see the answer. Because there's a massive difference in seeing the answer and thinking of like, hey, yeah, that makes sense. I would also have done that or actually deciding that answer yourself before seeing the answer. There's a massive th difference there and it will help you to identify what are situations in the game you wanna spend more time on studying. So really guys, a top set with an ace and an eight. What are you doing? Check call, check raise, check raise, do it. Okay, this is good. Let's go to the next hand. Top set and a middle pair blocker. Mm, could be one of our check calls. If we would ever check call Jack-Jack, this is probably one of the better ones because we don't have much backup. I like a call. Look at Jack-Jack, guys. Top set. 
Top set trade or broker 72%. If we just quickly look into our um, top set, check raise is 76%. Okay. Okay. Uh, where is the training? Okay. Ace 884. Easy check fold. 9967. Middle set, bottom set blocker. Not much backup. Let's just check on. Check 10, 9, 8, top two pair open ender, check raise. Uh, queen 10, 9, 7. So we have middle pair, two back row flishers, and the open ended straight draw. I would check call it, but it's probably close. Like we. Yeah, we just check call. Ace king 9, 8. Middle pair, two over cards. Let's check call. Okay, that's a mistake. Too weak. 5533, three, three, easy check fold. King, queen, jack, seven. Like we know that we want to check raise 12%, right? So, check raise bluffs are hand that are. I mean, we have a gutter actually. Let's just check call. No, what? Yeah, I was. I don't know. I was thinking about check raising in a way, but then I saw the gutter and I thought it's too good to check raise bluff. But we are. Okay. And 9988, I would call. Like middle set is probably a check raise if you have a straight rule or if you have a jack blocker. Like that would be my hypothesis. So if we would go to, I mean, let's go to this for a second. So we open up a new window for a second, guys. And we're going to look at middle set. Um, let's just get rid of all of this. Set middle. So middle set, you can see on the right side, 29% of the time we check raise. I would say if you have a straight roll, we always check raise. Pretty much, 91 I would also check raise a lot if we have a top air blocker. So a jack. 56. Again. Seems to be correct. Not always, but often. And then beside that, you will see that it's pretty much a check hole. Like the rest, you can just simplify it, I think, to just not check raise any of them. But don't make the mistake to play middle set and bottom set too aggressively. You're going to end up getting it in against top set too often. And if not, then you're going to get it in against like a combo draw with good equity against middle set or bottom set. So don't, don't make the mistake of playing them too aggressively. Okay. Uh, top pair, open ender, two back door flush draws. I would say check raise. I think this is too strong. Uh, gutter, back door flush draw, easy check call. I would also check call this. This is one of our check raises. Check fold. Check call. Mm -hmm. Is queen jack four? Check call. So we have a double gutter and some future blockers. I think this is a check call. And again, in at the EV, you can see like how profitable a certain play is, right? This is the board. And this is a range. Arnold asks, are, if we check raise all our top sets, aren't we a bit weak with our check calling range? Well, you can see that we don't check raise all our top set, right? Like we check call 24% of them. So that's, I mean, a quarter of them we check call. 
And on top of that, we also, I mean, if you just look at all your sets, you can see that sets are check raising half of the time. So by not check raising all of them, which is what we do, only 50% of them, we pretty much make sure that we're also well protected on like pairing runouts, for example. Ace five, five, four, easy check fold. Ace is queen 10, check raise. Like this is one of those sort of exceptions where we check raise that with a hand that doesn't have a pair blocker to the board. And this is just a hand that is like overall really strong over pair, two backdoor not flush draws, open ended straight draw. You can see that this hand is also significantly stronger than calling, right? Like 9.3 deuce versus 8.5 deuce. So it's significant difference in terms of EV between both lines. Uh, ace, king, king, queen, gutter. Let's just check call. Ace, jack, jack, deuce. Check, raise. Check, raise. Check, call. Okay. This is definitely a race. Fold. I would check fold this bare middle pair. I would check call this. No worries, Arnaut. Thanks for the questions in the first place. I appreciate it. We're all here to learn, including myself. <laughs> As you can see, I make enough mistakes or I am unsure what to do in many spots. So I think this is one of those combinations where we could check raise bluff our hand sort of. We don't have great playability if we check call. We have queens as some blockers basically. We saw before, I mean, yeah, I think check raising is reasonable. It's not the correct play. Not the correct play. Okay. Let's take a second to look into uh, two pair that is top two. So two pair. You can see two pair is check raising 37% of the time. And if I scroll down, I want to basically look at the, the weaker check raises, basically. You'll see here we find some hands like Jack 988. So Jack 988, Jack 977, pretty similar to Queen Queen Jack 9. Jack 977. So the ID is King King Jack 9. So I think the overall ID is not that bad to check raise this hand. Our specific combo is not really a check raise, but yeah, overall it could make sense. I think it could make sense. Uh, fold. What? Oh, well, I would never, I would never call this hand. A say seven three. A bear over pair. Like I would just always fold that. A say seven three. I mean, look at this. And these are definitely hands that I think everyone would just check fold. And maybe in reality, we should check fold these hands. What do you guys think? This is pretty weird, pretty light to continue. So if we check fold like these in reality, like our check fold frequency increases, right? So... Thinking 10 6, there a call. 10 6, 5, 4. Hmm, fold. Bog down, yeah. <laughs> Versus robot, call. <laughs> Versus human, fold. <laughs> uh, fold. Fold. Call. Call. Oh, oh. We don't see too many check raises. That's a bit unfortunate. Top pair open ender.
A check 10A top pair open nander seems like a candidate to check, right? I would probably check call, but maybe that's too passive. Yeah, it's a call. It's a call. Bolt. Okay. Enough training for this board, guys. Enough training for this board. How many hands did we do? So far we are on around 10 hands or so. And I still have a list. Definitely some more room for more sessions here. <laughs> uh, anyway, this one we looked into this, right? Check call, check check, river bluff, he faults. Thinking 3-3. Three, three. Think we want to bet. Good board for our range, so we can bet 40% probably, 50% maybe even. Um, we unlock an ace, we unlock diamonds, we have backdoor clubs. Um, I think pretty good hand to just barrel. I would say half pot is a good sizing. You could also say bet like two thirds or three quarters. By betting half pot, the thing I like about betting a little bit smaller than three quarter pot is that we force our opponent to continue with more hands that we heavily dominate. Plus, we have a little bit better playability on turn and river, I think. Because if we bet large, we narrow our opponent's range down quite a bit. And, for example, a flush becomes way more scary suddenly. But if we bet smaller, like, a flush is still not a great card. But it's not as bad because our opponent suddenly has way more hands in his continuing range. Especially ace-x. Um, turn becomes pretty close. Um, obviously we have some Jack-10. Our opponent will probably have a little bit more Jack-10. He is in the advantage, I would say, in terms of straights. But we will still bet straights or some sets. And I think our set is actually a pretty decent candidate to bet again. We unblock diamonds. We unblock ace. Unblock ace queen, for example. Ace nine. He can have nine nine still. All hands that will still check back relatively often. Like diamonds will all probably always check back or very often. So I like a bet of half pot. Um, I recently made a YouTube video about... A similar topic, sort of. Where I went into turn sizing. Let me give you guys, actually, let me show to you what this one was. It was a little bit different, but in a way, God talks about this topic. Like, the video was called, is it a good PLO hand? And this one also talks about turn, continuously barreling the turn. When the flop is ace high, the turn brings a straight. I talk about sizing, for example, and I basically show why we want to use a half pot bet sizing and not a pot bet sizing, which is what I did in the video. I bet pot with a certain hand. So if you want to learn more about that, then check out this video. Is it a good PLO? And you can find it on my YouTube channel here. Um... So I like a half pot size bet. I don't like my check. Meh. I mean, I think we should. I mean, he's basically saying he has jack 10. I think we should still call one time. <laughs> I don't really like the fold. I think it's too tight. Yeah, I think we should just call. Let's have a look. Let's have a look into this shit. Uh, Ace King Nine. Do we have a board like that? Ace King Nine. Uh, unpaired with a suit. Ace Queen Nine. Ace King Nine. We had Ace King Nine. We got Ace Nine. Ace King Nine. I would say 40 to 45% betting. 
frequency is 45. And I had like King King 3 3. Seems like a pretty good hand to bet. We don't have a spade. Pretty mixed. Pretty mixed. We either bet or if we check and face a bet. Are we check raising middle set? No backup? I think so. Yeah. Pretty much check face. Well. I mean, I don't think I have a turn for this. Do we have a turn? Let's take a look. Ace King five, Ace Queen nine. We can use Ace Queen nine. It's definitely a little bit different. Ace Queen nine, Ace Jack. Eh. All these boards are not exactly the same. What I'm looking. Yeah. Offsuit queen, I mean offsuit king. It's definitely not the same. Definitely not the same. Mm, I don't know. Whatever, it's not the same spot. Anyway, um, so we fold Ace, 10, 10, 7. Uh, what do we think about the board? Good board for our range. We can bet quite frequently. We have the aces advantage. Both players will have a decent amount of queen x in their range. In position, maybe a little bit more even. If we bet, we want to use a small sizing on paired boards. There's no reason really to bet large. If you would bet large on these boards, like... The thing is that if you bet, let's say, 75% pot, you're going to narrow your opponent's range down a lot again, right? With his continues. He's going to continue only with Queen X and only the very best Ace X hands. So turn will be quite tricky to play with a lot of hands in your range, unless you have aces, for example. So in order for you to overcome that, you want to size down and challenge your opponent to continue with a lot of marginal hands also. And basically also push some equity with maybe a hand like Ace King. Or Ace whatever. And yeah, all those hands don't want to bet large, of course. So if we bet, go small. I think this hand is probably just a check. Too much medium strong. It's also one of the spots that if you bet and get cold, like you will end up checking basically every turn. I mean, maybe not this turn, but for the rest, like every turn really, you want to check. Because you have some showdown value, but you don't really want to build a pot again. And if you know that, that's generally a reason for not inflating the size of the pot. So on the turn we make trips, our opponent can of course still have queen x, which he will raise sometimes on the flop, but not always because the board is ace high, so he has queen x still quite a bit. He can also have any ace really that he not folds on the flop. So any ace is in there still. And ace jack, ace king are beating us. If we bet, there is some value versus a weaker ace. And against the queen, of course. Meh. Question is like, do we want to bet turn and then bet river again for value? And I think that becomes like a little bit too thin. So I'd rather check this and then bet a river maybe. Get called. So here we go. So now the river is a jack suddenly. And now we definitely can't bet anymore. Unless we make turn our hand into a bluff. <laughs> but that seems pretty weird. We block king 10. So we block the straights that now get there. Uh, I think we do, should check. I think we should check and hope to win versus the queen. Yeah, ace-king. 
Yeah. That's interesting. It is interesting, guys. Just going to take a look into this for a second. You can see that on Ace Jack Jack, for example, we are able to bet in theory at least 64%. So a hand like Ace 10 10 7 is probably in there. Oh, you can see this is one of the checks, and I think I understand the check. It's not much reason really to bet. Uh, turn is an offsuit ace, so that would be the ace of hearts. Let's imagine we would have bet the flop with ace, 10, 10, 7. Like, interesting to think about. And that is something that is really important in general in poker. That is that if you are a favorite on, let's say, the flop, that doesn't make that doesn't mean that on the turn you're also going to do really well. It really depends on the turn transition. But also it depends on the fact that your opponent is not holding any air anymore in his range, right? Like if you bet and your opponent calls, he's basically folds out all his air. While you, as the one who did bet the flop, you still have air in your range, right? Because you're bluffing on the flop as well. So suddenly his range becomes like significantly stronger and you still have a lot of weak stuff in your range also. And that leads to a situation where often on the turn you do less betting. For example, in this scenario, only 28% instead of 60% on the flop. So pretty important to keep that in mind. A hand like an ace suddenly becomes a pretty good hand to bet, of course, because we unlock or we can get value from jack, jack x. And like ace, 10, 10, 7 is again... Not a great hand to bet, which was also something that I felt during the review. You can see there is some betting, but generally checking is also okay. But of course I did bet. And what I'm more, more interested in now, are we ever turning an ace into a bluff? Let's say the river is a, I mean, a 10 is not like, let's say the river is a queen. River is a queen. We're gonna go for a queen. Queen of spades, actually. So on the queen of spades... What do we see? So an ace is never turning itself into a bluff. That's good to know. That's good to know. A jack is also never turning itself into a bluff. Anything worse than a jack? Oh, anything worse than trips. No, worse than... Why didn't this work? Worse than. Oh, wait. Without, better than trips. So our bluffs. Where do our bluffs come from, guys? Queen. <laughs> like, it's basically the queen on the right side. And then you even should ask yourself, like, do you ever bet flop and then bet turn with queen 5-3-3? These are also all very low frequencies, right? You can see it on the right, point, point, point zero three. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of funny. Like bluffs come from six, six, three, three. Pretty difficult to find, I would say. Five, five, dudes, dudes. I mean, we have to have some bluffs, right? And a solver just finds them. Somewhere. Which is interesting. Kinda interesting. Yep. 
Unlucky River. Uh, King for Deuce Rainbow. Check full range on this board. And we check fold. A says Queen 4. We will check on this board a lot. I think we can simplify to check your full range. Maybe a little bit personal preference. My hand clear check. And probably a check call. Over pair backdoor, flush draw, backdoor, straight draw. We want to check call this hand. Turn deuce. Mm, I would say we want to bet. We can get value from kings. Jack X. It's unlikely our opponent will bet on the deuce anyway. And we're pretty sure, confident now that we have the best hand. Deuce X is not really part of his range. Almost ever. So I would like a bet for half pot or one third pot. Like anything in that region. Okay. I like it. HX75. Again, board that is good for our range. We can definitely bet quite often here. But think about the hands that we want to bet with. Those are generally, let's say we have our full range of hands. So these are all the hands that we have. The top section are the very good hands. We want to often bet those for value and we want to check a few to check raise. And we have a lot of medium strong hands that we prefer to check to keep the pot small. And then we have some air and of that air we are betting some of them that have additional blockers or a little bit of equity and then we check our total trash basically to just give up this one seems like a medium strong hand so i would just check not a big fan of this call bet because think about if you get called there's basically no turn you're happy to bet on a jack it's an okay card, but even there, are, are you really happy to bet again? A 5, not great. 7, not that great. Like, an ace is okay, but even that, my opponent could have ace-queen or ace-king. I like a check much more. Uh, on the turn 3, we have a pretty easy check now, I would say. We have showdown value. We don't want to build a pot. If we're betting at cold, we're pretty... We do, don't do great. There's no need to really turn our hand to a bluff also, I would say. Uh, the question is... like, In a way, it seems like a pretty straightforward check. Because we have the ace. But is that really the case? Like, Are we really holding that much showdown value? Our opponent can have ace-king, ace-queen still. Can have some two pairs. I don't know. I want to look into this for a second just to get an idea. Ace 10 deuce. Ace 10 deuce. Because my question basically is are we ever turning an ace into a bluff on a run out like this? Just a bare ace. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, anyway. Rainbow. We need turns. So the board is ace, ace, ten, deuce. We don't have ace, ten, deuce. We have ace, jack, three. I think that is good enough. Ace, jack, three. Ying says, bet to fold out ace, queen, or ace, king. We also have the five, yeah, for sure. Okay, so this board, 40% bet. Ace, jack, five, seven. Like, what is a similar hand? I mean... Ace, queen is definitely a bit different, right? Ace, queen is different. Well, let's start there. Is queen five seven five? Is queen seven five? Pretty high frequency bet. 
pretty high frequency band. About ace 10, almost never. Pretty surprising. We checked the best ones, by the way, to check call. So we bet and get called, which I don't like too much. Turn is the deuce, I think. Off, yeah, low straight. So that would be an offsuit deuce, basically. So let's imagine we have... You can see that we start checking again a lot more because our opponent's range is now stronger. I had like ace, queen, seven, five, pretty much a check. Ace, 10, seven, five, also pretty much a check. So we check, my opponent checks back, and the river is the 8, right? The 8 of diamonds. Yeah, I wonder if we ever bluffed that ace, like it could be. I wouldn't be surprised. So we have top pair. Okay, that's pretty easy. Like top pair. Basically, if you have exactly top pair with no backup or not nothing better than top pair, you will always check. 100% check. What about middle pair? Middle pair. Like our bluffs more come so for, come from like jack x. Like you will see 38% of the time we bet if we have a jack or a Oh wait, it's not only a jack. There's also a 3 or an 8, basically. But a jack is a pretty good bluff. 8, not necessarily. A 3, okay. Okay, so our bluffs more come from a jack or an 8, basically. Interesting. Um, so we check. And King King check 4. Does his flop call make sense? Probably. I think that's good. So let's go here. He bet. Get called. And like king, king, queen, four, for example. Or king, king, ten, four. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Okay. Pretty interesting. Guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. We are in for about... What is it? 100 minutes, exactly 100 minutes. That's good. It's good length. Hope you enjoyed this session. If you do, please give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. Highly appreciate it. And if you like my content here, then subscribe to my channel. I will upload regular PLO content on this channel. So make sure to check it out. There are a lot of videos already on my channel. I think around like five, I don't know, like 70 or 80 videos probably. You can just check them out on my on my homepage, basically. This one was the latest one. I think that one was a pretty nice one. It's related to the topic of today, guys. So if you want to learn more about single race bots out of position, check out this video. And also this one, big mistake. It was also about single race bots out of position. So recently I've been diving more into that topic. And um, yeah, check out these two videos if you want to learn more about it. One more thing also which is kind of something I want to share, is that we are currently hiring new coaches for the PLO Mastermind. So if you are interested in becoming a coach, if you are a winning player, PLO 200 or upwards, if you want to share your knowledge with the community, if you think you have something unique to share, a cool approach, for example, or something different, then make sure to check out plomastermind.com slash apply. You can learn more about it here and also click on this link to get into it, basically. Guys, hope you enjoyed this session. Hope you do. And uh, yeah, catch you guys soon for another episode. And uh, enjoy your day. Let's crush it at the tables. And uh, talk soon.